We're here in the Bowtie Treasure Studio. As always, well, as often as we can on Friday night. I'm happy to share my project with you and talk about a few other things as always. As you drop in, I always like to hear you're watching, so don't be a shadow watcher off in the distance. Say hi to everybody, let us know where you're watching from. As you jump in, always uh, great to hear from everybody. Okay, well, let's jump into the next project. Across the bottom of the screen and also in the description, I mentioned two colors that I'm gonna be using. One is Midnight Sky, and the other one is Stormy Seas. Um, but I really, I started this project thinking I, needed, I wanted to do something different. It's kind of been a challenge for me of late. And so what I did was I used the Harlequin stencil on this piece and i only used it i only used the bottom row to help create the diamond shape i just thought it'd be kind of cool have this bold dram dramatic stop of the paint i'm literally going to leave the original wood down at the bottom so instead of having a fade or a true stencil i just used I could have taped it all off and this tape right here is only to tape off the paint where the stencil wasn't going to go and you can see i also did it on the side so just doing something kind of different and but i do want to i think it'd be nice to blend from the top down um, the and i'm going to blend stormy seas to midnight sky so i'm going to jump right into it if you guys are up to it I'm using, I like to use Dixie Bell's paint deck because it lets me know basically which colors would be best for my project. This is Midnight Sky and this is Stormy Seas. So they have a good harmony to them. They both have a little bit of the same temperature on the color wheel. And, you, and to give you an idea of what, what I did, like I could come over here and put, I'm trying to find it. And if you have one of these color decks, my color decks a little different order than yours. I like to do mine by value. So this right here, this is Bunker Hill Blue. But I didn't really want to put that much of a bright blue on there. I did want to keep it dark. So I thought by the time I compared the two, I felt like, okay, and I will just say this, that in the navy, this is in the navy. It's kind of close. It's got a little bit of blue. It would work, but the value is so close, I don't think I would see it. So that's one reason why I chose Stormy Seas, and I'm so far very happy with that result. So this is where the color deck, and you can get these on Dixie Bell's website, come in, come in handy. I'll probably not put Stormy Seas on the top. I'll just leave it Midnight Sky, and we'll just do Stormy Seas down. So my goal is Stormy Seas blend into Midnight Sky, and then I will just, this is only one coat of Midnight Sky. And then I will work around this pattern at the bottom to finish it all off, but it should work out really well. One of the things that you can do, let me go ahead and grab one because I feel like I need to do it in this case. I'm going to grab one of Dixie Bell's sanding sponges. And I'm just going to do a quick, just to make sure there's no um, anything in the paint. And then if you want, you can go ahead and, and just um, dust it off, knock it off, wipe it off. That's fine too, if you expect that to be an issue. I took the mirror out of the frame earlier. It's always interesting to see how old the piece is. 1919 was the, uh, at least the age of the mirror. Usually the mirrors are put in about the same time the furniture's painted, so. So we're going back to the bottom again. Second coat of Midnight Sky. I rarely stress too much over perfect blends but if it looks bad i will 
do another blending attempt on that side or any side really. So, okay, so you can see that that side's coming together really well. You switch colors. Okay, so we're getting close. When you get close, that's where you want to go ahead and put some more paint down. You can't blend without extra, with the paint being there. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're blending a dry brush to a dry brush. That doesn't really work. Okay, that should be enough. I'm gonna wet between the two layers. A little bit more midnight sky just to add more paint down because while you're working on the top, this part's drying, so you need it wet. Okay. And now we're gonna go back to our blending brush. And we're just gonna crisscross those two colors together. Just crisscross. I sometimes call it infinity, little infinity symbols, you know. This one's working really nice. I'm going to wipe off the extra. If you need to do a little bit more longer swooping, that's fine. One of the things that's kind of messing me up a little bit is the, the, the corners. My brushes are hitting that, so I'm not really getting all the way in there. That's kind of what I'm having to fine tune a little bit. The bottom line is the goal here is you're just disguising brush strokes. I'm gonna come back with my Midnight Sky brush and just kind of clean up a little bit of, or even add some more paint. Okay, so here you can see I'm just, just fine tuning it. Corners are really messing with me. Okay. So the next thing I'm gonna do now is just work on getting a second coat of Midnight Sky on here. Sometimes I don't always get to paint the tops on a live, but the nice thing about the older furniture that's all wood is that you get the grain. Uh, modern furniture doesn't always have the grain showing. It's usually very smooth and polished. So this one, you can actually see it. So oftentimes what I like to do is go against the grain and then smooth it out. The tops are the most important aspect oftentimes for a piece because this is what people will touch and see when they go to purchase it. They feel the tops and they want to feel it smooth. They want to feel it how it's going to be in their house. So I do extra work. I don't top coat this way, but to me, this is a great way to spread out your paint and get a nice, beautiful, even coat if you need. And I go into the paint container a lot because you don't want to put too much paint down. Whatever you do, do not leave the strokes that are going against the grain. That's just the time that you're, it's only doing that to put the paint down.
I put the first coat on just like to do the second coat. And when I'm done, it'll be silky smooth. Sanding between coats helps. That includes top coat, it's sanding between top coats. Now you see how I'm doing this right here? This is putting some brush strokes on the top, so you might have to just come back and get some of those counter strokes out of the way. It's really my goal just to keep challenging myself. And if I painted everything the same thing over and over again, you'd kind of get tired of seeing it. I get tired of painting it, but uh, I'd never worry if something doesn't quite turn out the way I want. And um, if you're following my podcast, I didn't get to do one Sunday, but if you're following my podcast, you know that um, I talk about things like editing your work. And we tend to, if you try to get too overcritical of your work, you can be in a discouraged mode a lot. Sometimes you just have to realize that it may not be something you enjoy, but someone else might really love it. So um, edit as much as you think you can in order to make it marketable. But uh, don't be too critical on yourself. It's just paint, you know, put another coat on, try another technique. Um, everything between washes and distressing and all kinds of things, there's so many options out there. So as I expected, wasn't really happy with only having blending on this dresser. So I decided to add some depth. I'll call it texture. Not really texture you can feel, but depth overall, some character, and right now I'm using Midnight Sky to go over the Stormy Seas lighter section. And I'm just roughing in color. So you can see I dipped my brush into the container, missed the piece, missed the brush, and just spread it out. You could create a wash if you wanted to, but really the goal here is just to cover up the Stormy Seas section. And then I'm gonna come back with a wet rag and I'm going to remove some of this paint and it'll leave a little bit of a noticeable texture or pattern. I've done this on several pieces in the past. You can check out other YouTube channel uh, videos that I've done. And you see it has a little bit of a pattern to it. I then moved on to the other side of the dresser and I'm doing exactly the same idea. Quickly roughing in the texture or the paint don't have to be pretty on this one just get it on there covering up the sections that you would like to then relief the paint so it's a quick process there's not a lot of area to cover but i'm basically overall just toning down the stormy seas paint as i kind of felt like it was a little too bold i mentioned or you could custom mix this color if you wanted to but i am still using the blending as part of the overall look I'm just toning down the, the distance between those two areas. I then move on to the front, applying the midnight sky, just blocking it in, roughing it in. Apply as much paint or as little paint as you want. The key here is to work wet, so you'll see me misting a lot, but overall I'm just trying to get the color on there. and get the same look that I did on the other two sides and then come back with the rag. Be creative here, remove as much as you want. Sometimes it depends on how wet the rag is. It is going to be how much you take off. And so the misting bottle is really critical here and Dixie Bell's misting bottle is really great for this project. And you can see I'm just going back and double check the other side. All right, after that's all dry, I'm coming back in now with Midnight Sky and a small flat well it's a flat round brush by Dixie Bell and I'm really loosely applying texture I'm purposely not filling in the entire Harlequin pattern um, it's just wanted to be imperfect so there's gonna be areas where there's be more paint than others and in this case you're gonna see I did all the sides and the front mainly focusing on the top section and I'm really liking the look so far. One of the things I noticed after working on the top is that the bottom was too plain now. So I'm going to use the same technique on the bottom as I did the top, but I'm switching to the Stormy Seas color. So now I'm adding the same kind of texture idea to the lower section, just so that the entire painted area has that same feel 
So just keep moving quickly. Make sure you have that misting bottle handy. Apply just a little bit of paint at a time. You can see I'm spraying the brush as well. If you're not going to, if you don't do this technique quickly and wet, it's going to start drying on you and you're not going to be able to remove it with a wet rag very effectively. You'll notice there's even some places I even go over some of the previous texture and stenciling. That's okay. It's going to tie it all together. So just keep it loose. And you'll notice that there's a couple areas where I go below the Harlequin border across the bottom. I just used my rag and wiped any of that off. You see they're kind of lifting up and it had no problem at all. I have no paint below that pattern row and it was just the paint comes off pretty quick because it's wet. So you see again continuing to dab, remove just whatever looks good for the piece. So, you know if you put a lot of paint on you might have to dab more. It just uh, you, you uh, decide for that particular look how much to remove on that piece overall. Once I was done applying that light color to the front, I moved on to the side just to finish that up. Follow the same exact process. It's kind of daring to just jump in there with this color like this, but you just have to know that you've got a look you're going for. You can be as careful as you want applying this color like I am, but I've always just found that getting it on there quicker is more important than being precise because you're removing a lot of it anyway. So even down below on the bottom, didn't worry, really worry too much about that since there's chalk paint there. When I wipe away, the paint will stay where the chalk paint previously was. It's just a fun, this is a fun technique to try because it'll never be the same twice. No matter how many pieces I've done like this, it all just kind of changes based on the colors I'm using, how much water I'm using. And so it's kind of exciting and being able to transform a flat one color finish. You can still see some of the gradient coming through, but I've really toned it all down and it's coming together quite well. All right, so this portion, I thought, well, if I'm gonna stencil the top section, I need to put some stencil on the bottom section just to really tie the whole sections together. You can see my painter's tape's giving up a little bit, but since I'm not being too intense with the stencil, meaning I'm just throwing it in sections here and there, it's not a problem. Did you notice that I started on a stencil area with my paint so that as I move off, I didn't charge right into an open area and that helps kind of discharge some of the paint. So I'd finished that side up. Now I moved on to the other side with this look. Just getting those stencils in there. I'm not going over the top section again, mainly just where I had not stenciled yet. I expected that this section would not be as prominent because I'm putting midnight sky stencil over mostly midnight sky area. But because of the Stormy Seas Wash, you'll see it faintly, and that's really the look I'm going for. I did not go all the way down to the very bottom. And uh, here you can kind of see I was being a little random, which kind of helps the pattern be not so perfect. All right, well, I'm so happy you all tuned in tonight, and uh, always good to see comments and y'all um, in here hanging out with me, so I appreciate that. Don't hesitate to let others know about uh, Bowtie Treasures and the uh, creations we have. Especially check out my YouTube if you're not subscribing over there. It's a great gallery of videos that you can always tap into if you need some creative uh, push or some technique help. I'm Aaron here in the Bowtie Treasure Studio. Thank you so much for watching. Y'all take care. Be creative. Do something awesome this weekend. We'll see y'all later. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.